today will come from Psalm 92. And we're going to start at verse number one. That's Psalm 92, verse number one from the New Living Translation. The NIV is the King James, the New King James Version, I'm sorry. Psalm 92. And it says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Yes, Lord. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your works. I will triumph in the works of your hands. And then we're going to skip down to verse number 12. It says, The righteous that flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. You know, for everything that God does, we want to thank God for all that he does. And anytime God does something great, it's time to go God allowed in these church to still be standing out for 29 years. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I'm sure that Pastor Davis would say that all of those 29 years were not a bed of roses, but that sometimes they were challenging. But God has been faithful to our church and our church family, and we are just so glad about that. That's why we can say how great is our God. There's no other name like God, and he is so worthy to be praised. How great, how great is our God. Jesus of Christ, we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity. God, we thank you, Father God, for another honor just to come in your presence, Father God. But God, we know that you are the awesome and the almighty God. We thank you, Lord, that you are God all by yourself. God, we thank you for who you are, for what you do, and the way you do things. God, we honor you today. We praise you today. We magnify you today. We lift you up today, Father God. For you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. God, we thank you, Father God, for blessing us one more time to come to the house of prayer, to come to the house of praise, to lift our hands and our voices unto you. God, we honor you today, and we praise you today. Now, Father God, you are good, and you are God all by yourself. Lord, you've been faithful to us. And you have kept us. Now, Lord, we've been unfaithful to you. We confess our sins. We've fallen short, Lord. We've missed the mark. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. And, Lord, we ask you to forgive us today. Don't hold it against us, Father God. But bless us, Father God, to confess our sins. And we know that you are faithful, Lord. And you are just, Lord, to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now we've gathered here today, Father God, on this 29th year anniversary, Father. Lord, we thank you for keeping the New Beginning Church. From, from every pastor from beginning to end, you kept the church. For every danger seen and unseen, you kept our church. And for that, Father God, we thank you. We honor you and we praise you today. Now, Father God, we ask you to bless the service, that it will be glorious to you, that your spirit, Father God, will lead us, direct us, and keep us, that your Holy Spirit, Father God, will walk throughout the room, and he will impact us, Father God, as never before. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us to lose ourselves in the service, 
that we, Father God, will give ourselves to you and that you will glorify your name and your name will be lifted up. We come to exalt you today, Father God. We come to lift you, Father God. We come to raise you, Father God. Lord, your word says if we lift Jesus, you will draw all men unto us. Lord, we thank you for it. We magnify you and we glorify you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the great God and you are the great King. Thank you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Some of the night. 
my God is awesome. My question to you is, is your God awesome? <laughs> we serve the awesome God, I tell you. We serve the amazing God. We serve the faithful God. Our God is the awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the reminder, choir, that God is awesome. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. I call your attention to Isaiah chapter 25, if you don't mind standing. Would you please stand for the word of God? In the Old Testament, the book is Isaiah. The chapter is number 25. Verse is verse number one. In the Old Testament, the book is Isaiah. The chapter is 25. The verse is verse number one. We've come to celebrate 29 years of the faithful God. I'm telling you, he's been faithful. He has been the faithful, the awesome, and the amazing God. He's been, he's been faithful. 29 years says he was faithful before I got here. <laughs> so it says, it reminds me that uh, he didn't do it because of me. He is just faithful. Matter of fact, he was faithful before you got here. Before your mama saw the twinkle in your daddy's eye, he was faithful before then. Amen. He is, he is the faithful God. He is the faithful God. Isaiah chapter 25, verse number 1, says, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithful and true. I want to talk about God is faithful. I said, God, God is faithful. God is, God is, God is faithful. I said, God is. Man is not faithful. But the almighty God we serve, he is, he is faithful. He is he is the faithful God. There is none like our God. He is, he is faithful. I'm telling you, God is faithful. I want to remind you, God is, God is faithful. God is faithful. I said God is faithful. I'm not talking about the person sitting next to you. I'm not talking about the person in front of you or behind you. I'm talking about God. God is, is faithful. When you look over the shoulders of your life and you really, really search things over, the wonder is, do you realize how faithful God has been to you? Do you really, really, I, I know it sounds good saying it in church. I, I know, I know it, it, it looks good on Sunday morning. But my question to you this morning, when you look over the shoulders of your life, yes, yes, yes. do you realize how good 
and how faithful God is. We ought to have testimonies all over the room. We ought to have testimonies all over the airway. <laughs> that the God we serve, he is faithful. We ought to have testimonies all around us. We ought to have testimonies that say on a continual basis, when I went to the doctor's office and the doctor saw something, and then I prayed to Almighty God, and God not only fixed the situation, he became a, he became a witness to those in that profession. All right, all right. I know you've heard the story before, but let me, let me just tell it again just in case you haven't heard it. And if you have heard it before, act like you haven't. It was September 5th, 1995, that I was rolled into Southwest Memorial Hospital to do the final prep for open heart surgery. A congenital heart murmur that had been plaguing, they thought me for years. Running and daddy wouldn't let me do some activities. And baseball, football, basketball, and I, I hung with the best. But on September 5th, 1995, they rolled me into Southwest Memorial Hospital to do one final check before they had surgery on September 6th. All right. I'm here to tell you God is faithful. As I laid there and they did one final check with a heart catheterization. I mean, they did one final check, and it just happened to be one final check before they took a drill and a saw and, and drilled into my sternum. Before they took their hands and, and pulled my chest open. Before, just before, they wanted one final check. So they decided to do this one final check before September 6th, because on September 6th, you could hear zzz as the blade went through my chest. So they decided on September 5th, Southwest Memorial Hospital uh, uh, in, 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 in Houston, Texas, right off uh, of Fondren and, and Beach Nut, they decided to do one final check, Sister Brown. So it's called the angioplasty. It's called, it's, it's called the, the, the heart catheterization where, where they go in and they run a tube, Sister Lee. And, and, and they look on the end of that tube. They got a little camera there and they can tell everywhere they go and, and they can check your pressures as they go. And in the middle of the procedure, while I'm laying there between earth and heaven, while I'm laying on this cold operating table, while I'm lying there, I'm just lying there, and I'm, I'm talking to them, and they're talking to me. And the doctor comes, Dr. Grinstead, Carter G. Grinstead, comes to the side of my bed and says, something is wrong. Now, let me tell you, in case you don't know it, when the doctor says something wrong, let me tell you, it's something wrong <laughs> If the doctor, in the midst of the final check, if the doctor, right before he saws your chest open, if the doctor says something is wrong, let me tell you, you don't have to ask anybody. If the doctor says something wrong, something is wrong. I said, well, Doc, what's wrong? I'm, I'm, I'm cool, calm, and collected because I'm trusting God. And regardless of what the doctor says on planet Earth, I know my doctor is in heaven. He says, what I'm trying to say to you is, what we saw on September 17th, we don't see on September 5th. Hallelujah. And therefore, I am counseling open heart surgery, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So it is over and it's done with. Well, you know, after they, they poke around on you and, and put stuff up in you, you got a, a time to, 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 to lay there in and, and recovery and, and think about what you've gone through. And so when the doctor entered the room, Sister Henry, I began to ask the question because every situation we are placed in is an opportunity to, to declare God before a whole world. That's right, that's right. So the doctor comes in the room and I said, Doctor, well, what do you contribute to? <laughs> he says, well, just over a period of time, it just kind of healed itself. 
I said, well, doctor, you telling me, uh, 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 you telling me, May, June, July, August, September, you telling me in a matter of four months, doctor, a condition that I've had for 36 years just healed itself? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, doctor, would you say that there was some divine intervention? He said, no, no, I wouldn't say that. I just say over a period of time it healed itself. I said, well, doctor, I'm glad you used the word heal because man can treat. Man can cause a cure, but only God in heaven can heal. It was at that moment, it was that morning that, that, that it was that morning, at that moment that morning that Turning Hearts Ministry was born. I'm telling you, it was good that I was afflicted. It was born, and, and I came to the conclusion as God continued to speak to me, and as the doctor stands there in amazement, that, that God said to me, the same problem you can have in your physical heart can take place in your spiritual heart. I just stopped by to tell you God is faithful. <laughs> I, I, can I just want to tell you that he will do what no other power, Holy Ghost power, can do. When we look at the text, when we look at the text, we, we find a nation of people that have been, been taunted by others. Much like Russia in Ukraine right now, there was a nation of people that was always bullied by others. But God rescued them. God kept them. And so Isaiah put it in, in verses and in words. Isaiah says, oh, Lord. Isaiah says to us today, he says, now, when you're talking about the goodness of God, when you're talking about who God is and what God has done, you have to use some terminology sometimes that, can't, that no man can explain. He says, he says, oh, Lord. Don't run past O because O, when I looked up the definition, I couldn't find one. And, and he's not just talking about O that's in the midst of a word. He's talking about O that's all by itself. So he says, oh, Lord, don't push past it. Don't read over it. Even though it's one letter, it means much. What the, what the writer is saying here is that I have a term right here that can't even explain God. It can't even adjust to who God is. It can't even expose who God is. So I just say, oh, have you had any old moments in your life? <laughs> have you had any situations in your life where, where life was not able, you were not able to explain life? You were not able to determine where you were headed or where you were going? And all of a sudden, out of the middle of nowhere, there came some divine intervention. <laughs> And you don't have to say much. You don't have to praise him at all. You can say, oh, Lord. And when you holler, oh, Lord, what you're really saying is, God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you do. And I thank you for the way you do things. You see, oh, comes from deep down within. It comes from deep down within your innermost being. It, it comes from somewhere you really can't gather, some, somewhere you really can't, can't determine, somewhere where you're itching and you can't scratch it. If you're born again, if you're saved, every now and then you have some old moments. You have a moment that you're going through something and, and life has threatened your very life, but you look to the hills from which comes your help, and I'm telling you, help comes from the Lord. He says, he says, oh, oh Lord, this, this word Lord in my book is capitalized, all caps. It, it determines that it is the great God. It, it is the Jehovah God. It is the eternal God. It is the self-existing God. I know you've heard it before, but God wasn't voted God. He just is God. He, he wasn't legislated God. He's a self-existing God. No one made him God. No one started him off being God. He just is God, and he never will be was God. He always will be is God. He is God all by himself. He says, oh, God, this, this, this Lord, this word Lord is Jehovah. He says, oh, Lord. He's talking about God who who doesn't, doesn't need our approval. 
He's talking about a God that exists on his own. You see, it took 23 chromosomes from your dad and 23 chromosomes from your mama in order to exist. But let me tell you, God didn't need any chromosomes. He just is God. He is God all by himself. He, he's a self-existing one. He is the Lord God himself. This word Lord is an Ananai God. He is self-existing. He is almighty and all-powerful. He is Jehovah. To the Jews, this is his national name. He is the Lord God Almighty. Let me just share with you. If you're going to call on anybody, you better call on this Lord. <laughs> if you're going to share your story with anybody, you better share your story with this Lord. If you're going to testify to anybody, if you're going to be thankful about anything, you better be thankful for this Lord. He is the self-existing God. Isaiah says, not only are you Lord, he says, you are my God. He says, that now, I've already said to you, you are my Lord. You, you, are, you are Lord. And I, I've gotten excited just talking about who the Lord is. The writer Isaiah says that I'm excited just to tell you about who the Lord is. I'm excited just to tell you who he is and what he does when he talks about Lord. He includes us and lets us know that he's not just his Lord. He can be our Lord also. But then he makes it personal. He says, you are my God. You see, when he talks about him being the Lord, I told you, he's really, really saying to us today, he's really, really saying to us, to the Jews, he is Jehovah, the one who makes things well. He is Jehovah God. But then he says, you are my God. So he deals with the fact that he's a, he's a corporate God. He is the corporate Lord. And then he says, you are my personal God. It's right there in text. When you look in the English language, you will find the word my is a possessive form. So he possessed the fact that the Lord God that he's talking to, he's reminding us as well as he's telling God that he is my personal God. Let me tell you, you need a personal God. You may have a personal pastor. I mean, every member, every member of the New Beginning Church and then plus some have their personal pastor. And I know they got their personal pastor because... They can call anytime. And some of you all use that opportunity. It's because you have my personal phone number. Most of you know my personal address. But let me tell you, there's going to come a day where my tongue will cleave to the roof of my mouth. Where they will fold my hand in service the very last time. And you can't call on me anymore, but you're going to have to call on, on God himself. So he says, he says, you are, you are my, you are my, you are my, you are my God. This, this word, God, is the magistrate. This word, God, is the judge. This word, God, is the supreme one. He is God himself. Let me tell you, there's none higher than him. There's none more powerful than him. And he is God. He's God. He says that the text declares in the Hebrew writing, the text declares not only is he Jehovah God, but he is also God Elohim. Not only is he Ananai God, but he's also the supreme God. He, he is God and he has major authority. He, he is God. He's God. He's, he's the magistrate. He is the judge. He is the supreme God. And let me tell you, when you get happy, don't worry about your makeup in your, in your, in your brains. Because you are glorifying the awesome and the amazing supreme God himself. What would it be like if every nation of the world would just pause for two seconds. Not very long. If the, every nation of the world would pause for two seconds and cry out, Oh, Lord, my God. 
the supreme God, the, the one who makes things well. We have to cry out to him. Are you going through something? I got a recipe for you. If are you going through something, I got some ingredients for you. If you're hitting a brick wall every time you look up, I have an answer for you. The answer you need to do now is cry out to the Lord God Almighty and claim him as my God. He is. He is. Isaiah says he is my God. Now he recognizes God. Then he gets real with God. It gets real. In, in the same verse, he says, I will exalt you. He says, I will exalt you. This word exalt simply means that I will raise you. This word exalt means that I will promote you. This word exalt means that I will lift you and hold you. This word exalt, this word exalt simply means that we need to lift God and hold him there. See, we are busy putting other people before God. We are busy putting other things before God. But what we need to do is exalt God, meaning to lift him, to raise him, to promote him, to lift him and hold him there. The, 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 writer, the writer declares, God, I, I know you as Lord. I, I know you as the, the supreme God. And because you are God and there is no one like you, I will lift you and hold you there. It is the same, it is the same word. We get the, get the word that Isaiah uses in Isaiah chapter 6. He says, it was on the, in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord and I saw him in a miraculous way. I saw him high and lifted up. This word high and lifted up means to horse God. We need to be busy hoisting God. We are hoisting our problems. We are hoisting our, our couples. We are, we are hoisting our issues. We are hoisting our children. We are hoisting our spouse. We need to horse up God. He says we need to lift him. In the midst of your troubles, you need to lift him. And the text says not only do we lift him, but we hold him. You got to hold him. You got to hold him there. And see your actions and your thought patterns declare whether or not you're lifting him and holding him there. Matter of fact, the world, this dying world can see us. And this dying world knows whether or not we're lifting him and holding him there. You see, some folk are lifting him on Sunday morning between 1030 and 12 o'clock. And some folk, after they, they hear the benediction and before they hit the parking lot, they lower God down and they lower their standards. Let me tell you, when you got high standards and you have high standards for the almighty God, you keep lifting him Monday through Saturday. Doesn't matter who you with, you lifting him. Doesn't matter where you go, you lift him. Doesn't matter how you act, you lift him. I mean, you can be at Black Knight at the rodeo and still lift him. Many people, many, many people have lost their witness in the midst of the rodeo. Many people have lost their witness in the midst of a party. Many people have lost their witness in the midst of hanging out with family members because when you get too comfortable with them, then you just let it all hang out. Let your hair down, girl. Let me just bag up and park right here. Let me tell you something. There is absolutely nothing wrong with dancing. And there is nothing wrong with dancing to secular music. But you can let off some subliminal messages while you're dancing. You, you can let off some messages that speak way down the road to little children later on. So when you dance, you got to make sure you dancing the right way, doing the right motion with the right person. Uh -oh, I know I got some holy folk in the room today, so I'm... I, I, you may not listen to me anymore, but I, I just love to dance. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Some of you have already put me, put me in. But I won't, I, won't, I won't dance at your wedding celebration. I won't dance at the wedding celebration. I won't dance at the reception. I, I, I won't dance because you know what, Brother Miles? If they see me doing the two-step. They said, ooh, Pastor David just lost. A girl, I thought he was really holding, so I don't dance. 
Matter of fact, when the party gets good, I look at Sister Davis and we look at each other, and, and that's our indication, Sister Dear, where it's time to escape the place. I mean, I mean, that's before the drinks come out. That's, that's before folk lose their mind. That's before they start dropping. Uh, yeah, that's before then. In other words, I'm setting you free to do you. I'm setting you free. I mean, after the benediction to the wedding, I try to be a little sociable, give me something to drink, something to eat, and when I drink, it's in a clear cup. Matter of fact, I ask him, do you have a clear cup? Because I want to set you free to do you. Don't, don't, don't look at me and think that I'm going to call you out because God is still watching. And because he is watching, you ought not concern yourself with me because God sees everything. I told you that, that word that I made up the other night, that word I made up, he is omnivisual. He is all visual. He is all visual. Matter of fact, he's all places at the same time. He is God Almighty. He sees all. He knows what you're doing. He's omniscient. He knows before you do it. He's God. He's God. He's God. And, and it's that God we ought to exalt. Now, y'all y'all won't get mad if I, I dance a little bit at home with my wife, would you? Y'all won't condemn me, would you? And, and let me tell you, all the single folk in here, if you want to dance like that, you need to get married like this. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do what married folk do, you need to get married. <laughs> if you, you want to act like you're married, get married. And need for, you know, I find myself many times, I find myself many times, Brother Thomas, I find myself many times, Brother Thomas, trying to figure out whether folk are married after they told me they're married. I mean, they stood right there, and they told me they're married. They stood right there and introduced her as his wife. She, she stood right there and introduced him as her husband, and I'm left trying to figure it out. And let me just tell you, I'm not slow, and that's not why I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out now, Brother Alfred, because people will say they're married when they're shacking. I'm trying to figure it out, Brother Irvin, because people will say they're married because they've been together. I'm trying to figure it out when, when people say they're single, whether they're really single or not. <laughs> Sister Henry says she's single and ready to pringle. We're trying to figure it out because you have a different standard of being single and a different standard of being married. We have different standards. We have different standards. We have different standards. We have, we have, we have standards that I hadn't even heard of. I, I'm, I'm left some of the time just looking at Sister Orr like this, like, what in the world did they just tell me? It happened right here, right here at the church. The guy said, hey, Pastor Davis, this is, and he's not in the room. Hey, Pastor Davis, this is my wife. I said, man, when y'all get married? Well, you know. <laughs> Let me just clear it up for the record. If you don't have a license from the state of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arizona, somewhere. And that license has been mailed in to the state. Then you're not married. I know somebody hit me right there. Somebody knows what I'm saying right here. You see, you see, if I marry you, I get to keep the license. Brother Step told those licenses belong to me until they send them back to you. Because if I marry you, if I marry you, I'm going to be the one to mail them in to the state. And within a week or two, they mail them back to you. Because what people do today is they will say they married, they have a big ceremony, feed a lot of people, and then they will take the license and slide it up under the drawer at home. But when you live for God, I'm talking about lifting him. The, the text says that I will exalt you. I will, I will lift you. And when you lift him, you hold him there. When, when I exalt him, when I lift him, I hold him there. And when you don't act like you're a Christian, when you don't act like you're a Christian, when you don't act like you both belong to him, you're not holding him there. Let me tell you, the text declares, God, I'm going to lift you. And when I lift you, I'm going to hold you in that position. What he's saying is, my lifestyle will say that I'm lifting you. 
My lifestyle, my lifestyle, my lifestyle. You know, some folk just, they just can't make it to church on time. I mean, church, it's almost like they, we have to fumigate the place for them to get here. Well, I ain't going to leave home until they got it completely clear of all the roaches, the bugs, and, and all the stuff that goes on over there. I mean, it is like clockwork. It's like clockwork. It's always the same folk. And they got different excuses. That's what tripped me out. But when you lift him and hold him there, you, you, you prioritize God. You make God top priority. You put God in first place. The, the word, we, when we went to Brazil, the word, the word was God first. In, 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 in Brazil, when you, speak, when you speak their language, when you, when you speak that language to God, God in first place is what you're saying. The Portuguese language means that God is in first place. So we have to get to a point in our life where we put God in first place and hold him there. Keep him there. And even when he whistles at you, girl, keep him there. Even when she walks and she shashays from side to side, keep him there. Even when, even when somebody tempts you to, to put something on them, keep him there. You need to make sure you tell the devil, devil, I'm hoisting Jesus today. I'm hoisting God. I'm lifting him up, and I'm going to keep him there. And I'm not going to let you and your shenanigans make me pull him down. Keep him there. I mean, bosses are number one for making you go off. But let me tell you, baby, you need your job. Keep your mind and your mouth to yourself. You, you need it. You need your job. Let me tell you, folk are going hungry because they said something the wrong time, the wrong way, and to the wrong person. But you need to remember, like Isaiah says, I'm, I'm lifting Jesus. I'm, I'm lifting God, and, and I'm going to keep him there. He says, I will praise I will praise your name. He says, I will praise. I will, I will, I will, I will not only will I, will I horse you, not only will I promote you. And, and by the way, this word exalt means to promote him in a loud way. I know you just are an introvert and you don't get excited about very much anything. I know you got mild manners. And I know you don't go places and you don't get loud because that's just ghetto. Let me tell you, God says get ghetto. <laughs> I mean, this, this word promote, it says promote him in a loud voice. It, it means promote him. Jesus says, if these stop singing praises unto me, the rock's going to cry out. The songwriter said it like this. I don't want no rocks crying out in my place. He says, horse him, lift him, keep him there, and do it with a loud voice. Then he says, I will praise. He says, I will praise. He says, he says I will praise. This, this word praise, this, this word praise means to revere God. It means to worship him. It comes with the analogy of shooting your worship at God. It comes with the analogy, it says to throw or to cast your voice and your life at God. This word praise means to not only confess to God, but it means to give thanksgiving to God. So where is your aim? Where are you casting your praise? Where are you exalting God? Where, what are you doing? Don't let folk get you caught up in their stuff. You need to be praising God in good times and in bad times. The writer declares, Isaiah declares unto us that I will praise God. I will lift him. I will confess and, and thanks, give thanksgiving to him, but I'm going to cast it on God. I'm going to throw it. It means to shoot in a very violent way your worship to God. Let me tell you, when you leave church, you ought not be the same way you showed up. Matter of fact, if, if you're really, really casting your praises and your worship toward God, you ought to get rid of that gym membership. Because you could, you could tell your gym, uh, the associates at your gym, every Wednesday and every Sunday, 
I get my praise to a point where I'm casting it at God and I get a real good workout at church. I mean, you, you, you ought not be able to sit still. You, you ought not be able to be quiet. You, you ought to be able to, to shoot your praises unto God. So much so until the folk down the street at the liquor store, this party has to shut down. They want to come down here and see what's going on down here because we're shooting our praises unto the Lord. Thanksgiving. Does anybody in the room have anything, just one thing to be thankful for? Do you have just one thing? Did you have the one thing? There's just one thing to be thankful for? Do you have just one thing? Just do, have just one, do you have just one thing by which you're thankful? Let me tell you, if you're thankful for just one thing, let me tell you, you ought to be shooting your praises, shooting your worship. You ought to be aiming at God. Make God the subject of your praise. Don't worry about people. Don't, people don't have a heaven nor a hell to put you in. We, 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 go, to, we go to quiet churches. And when we get to those quiet churches, we blend in with them. But let me tell you, when God has been good to you, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to show some sign. When, when God has been blessing you, 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 ought to, you ought to raise the roof for him. I was sitting in the, in the graduation ceremony, and they had brought in a graduation speaker. And this brother was laying it out. I mean, he was an aging brother. Now, remember now, these are all students getting their master's and their doctorates. And this is an educated forum. And I'm, I'm just trying to hold my peace. I'm just trying to keep quiet. I'm, I'm just trying to be dignified, you know. I'm, I'm getting my doctorate that day, so I can't, I can't just let it go like I really want to go. You know? But I realize the God who got me. I, I thought about, I thought, and uh, this brother was speaking, and, and it was just so dignified, they clapped in unison. And they, they said very softly, yes, amen. And I'm just sitting there in the crowd, and I, I just can't hold my peace any longer. I can't, I can't take it. The guy, the guy was so excited, and he was so thrilled, and people just clapping in unison. And all of a sudden, he mentioned Jesus. <laughs> And just the mention of his name, I caught myself. I, I found myself. Sad brother, go ahead, get it on. And the president of the university was sitting on stage, and he just looked at me. And I just waited on the next round. <laughs> when he got wound up again, I got wound up again. It didn't matter if I walked that day. It didn't matter if I got my piece of paper that day. It didn't matter. I thought about in the midst of my, my degree, in the midst of my study, my wife got cancer even in my second class. I, I realized that day that in the midst of it, I, I, took, I took a three-year program and finished it in, in, in two years. I realized that it had to be nobody but Almighty God. And while the speaker was speaking, I couldn't hold my peace. I, I had to say, you're right. Praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, whether they give me a degree or not, I got to host him. And I got to hold him there. I have to be enthusiastic about who he is because he was enthusiastic about who we are. Never missed a bill. Sickness was all over the house. Helped by one to the other. And let me tell you, it's a two-year-long journey. In all two years, I'm, I'm sitting up to four and six o'clock in the morning trying to get my work in before eight o'clock the next day. And then I would leave the computer, run back in the other room and say, honey, you're doing all right. Let me tell you, when that guy started talking about the Lord, I couldn't hold my peace. I had to say, Lord, I thank you. So I'm considered the, the loud guy on campus now. You have to get to a point where you praise his name. He says this word name means God's character, God's authority, and God's position. And he'll tell you something. If you don't see God's character, if you don't see God's authority, and you don't see God's position, you are totally blind. Matter of fact, you better check yourself because you've already wrecked yourself because God is supreme in authority. His position, nobody else can handle it. And his character is unmatched. Yeah, yeah, when, when President Obama 
walks in the room, when President Biden walks in the room, when, when Vice President Harris walks in the room, we will all stand up. I chose the names because I chose these names. I intended to choose this name. When they walk in the room, we will all stand up because we give honor to a man and a woman and another man who's worthy of being honored. But when Jesus shows up, we can't stand up. We all have to bow down and worship him. He's unmatched. He's supreme in authority. He is the one with great character. The writer says, for you have done wonderful things. This word done, don't run over the word done. The word done means that you have shown forth wonderful things. The word done means that you have kept wonderful things. The word done means that you have maintained wonderful things. Let me tell you, the God we serve is the same God that brought Big Mama Nim over. And he, if we're going to get over, it's going to be the same God that takes us over. He says that he has done wonderful things. He's shown forth wonderful things. This word wonderful means marvelous. The word wonderful means miraculous. The word wonderful means supernatural. In other words, this word wonderful declares to us today that nobody can do it like God can as a matter of fact, not just nobody can do it like God can. Nobody can do it because God is the only one who can do it. Nobody like him. He has done wonderful things. He has done wonderful. Have you done anything wonderful in your life? I, I, I'm not talking about your children. I know you love them. I know you. I mean, grand, grandparents are just hysterical because they can spoil them for four hours and send them home. I mean, I know you love your children. I, I know you love your spouse. In that guy you dating, I know you love him. But the fact of the matter is, he has not done wonderful things. He has not done wonderful things. And, and, and the lady that, that you like the voice she has, uh, yeah, I know you're on top of that. And I, I know you love her because of it. I mean, she just turns you on in order to turn you off. But check this out. The fact of the matter is, they have not done wonderful things. Miraculous things. He has done wonderful things. He's done marvelous things. He has done supernatural things. The other day, brother said, God put some super on my natural. He has done supernatural things. So he says, but you have done wonderful things. Your counsel of old are faithful and true. Your counsel of old. The word, the phrase counsel of old means that God had a plan for you and your life a long time ago. It means that God's advice is still worthy to be heeded. It means don't take God for granted because his commandments, his commitment will always come to pass. The God that who have done wonderful things, he has counseled us a long time ago, and in his counsel, he has blessed us. I mean, people are running from their home. Millions of people have left their homes. I mean, acts of war has had, regulations of war, acts of war has just been moored down. Children, not even able to graduate from high school. Children, not even able to, to come out of the nursery. It's because mankind think they can do wonderful things. And let me tell you, the United States of America is just a blessed place. And it doesn't just have to be this way. It's because God has done wonderful things. His counsel, we got to stick with his counsel, his counsel of old, his advice of old, his, big mama and them were right, y'all, I mean, they were right, I mean, your, your parents hadn't been on earth this long because they were fools, I mean, you, you can't, you can't just ignore grown people and think God going to keep on blessing you, 
you can't just disrespect people and think God is always on your side. And let me tell you, if you don't have God on your side, you need God on your side. He blessed you this morning. He, he watched over you last night. He keeps on blessing us in spite of us. His counsel is real. And it's been in his plan for many years. And I'll close with this. God is, God is. is faithful. Isaiah says that his counsel of old are, are faithful and true. His word faithful simply means that God will take care of you. His word faithful means that God will do what he said he would do. David says it like this. I've been young. And now I'm old. And out of all of my life, I haven't seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed of the righteous begging for bread. Let me just share with you. God is faithful not only to keep you, but he's able to keep your children and, and your grandchildren. You just got to be faithful to him. This, this word faithful means God is steady. God has stability. God is, is trustworthy. You can trust what God says. I, I know you can't trust him, you can't trust her, and you can't trust them, but you can trust what God says. I mean, we got people that are, that, are, that are good at lying now. I mean, they can look at you and never flinch. I mean, they just flat good. At, they can look at you and make you think you the fool. They can look you dead in the eye. Sister Carla, they can look you dead in the eye and never flinch. You just say, no, I didn't do that. It's like a child. It's like the child. I saw this video of this child coming out of the kitchen with powder and sugar all over her face. I mean, she got it on her dress. She got it on her face. She, she walking out the, out the kitchen. And, and the mama said, where you been? I, I just been in there. What you been doing? I ain't been doing nothing. With a straight face. But let me tell you, the God we serve, he is faithful to the end. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. And he, this word truth means he is accurate. The word truth means that it is irrefutable. The word truth means that, that God has veracity. This courtroom term means that, that there is truth beyond truth. There is evidence of truth. And what we need to understand, the God we serve has truth. He has evidence of truth. Just look at his record. I told you that you need to look at his character. God's character deems truth. God's character has been faithful to us. Let me tell you, we don't, we don't deserve to be here. We don't deserve to be here. Uh, just last night about 7.45, I get a call from a family friend back, from my sister concerning a family friend back home. He sit down in a chair, and he just slept away from here. And he was my age. And let me tell you something. I have had opportunity to bury little babies because we need to know that God is faithful. And the reason why we're here is not because we've been so good. The reason why we celebrate 29 years is not because the church was on the right path for 29 years. It's not because preachers did the right things for 29 years. It's not because deacons act the right way for 29 years. It's not because members said the right prayers and, and they followed leadership like they should for 29 years. We're only here for 29 years because of God's grace and God's mercy. It's because he is faithful to us. Because let me tell you, there was a moment, there was a moment, there was a moment where I would have to get up at 3, 2 o'clock in the morning, get in the shower, let hot steaming water run on my head because it felt like worms crawling through my head. But in the midst of it, God was faithful. He was faithful. He was faithful when we had property on the freeway. He was faithful. He was preparing a long time ahead. He was faithful when we were able to, to leave 3.5 acres and get 7.0 acres. And guess what? For half the price, double the amount of, of our land. He has been faithful to us. 
God has been faithful in the fact that it wasn't a whole lot of folk. It was, it was only about 22 adults and 18 children. And then God brought us into this, this big old horse pasture. And when we bought it and when we seized it, it was still horses and cows grazing out here. And people saw a forest, but God saw a soul mine. God has been faithful to us. God has been strategically moving us. He has been faithful to us. And where children have been impacted by music, children have been impacted by drama, children have been impacted by technology, God has been faithful to us. And I want to tell you today, I wouldn't serve any other God than this faithful God. He's been mighty faithful to us. He's been so faithful to us until we don't even deserve his faithfulness. He's been faithful to us. 29 years, 29 years, 29 years. We, we got folk in the room that's not even 29 years old. God has kept us in spite of us, in spite of what we thought, in spite of what we did, in spite of how we acted, in spite of what we, what we, how we carried ourselves, in spite of us not getting along. God has been faithful to us, and that's why I lift him. That's why I glorify him. That's why I hold him up. That's why I praise him. That's why I shoot my prayers and my, my praises to him. That's why I aim my prayers at him. Because he's been faithful. And he didn't just start being faithful. He's been faithful for eternity past. Faithful for eternity now. And faithful for eternity present. Guess what? How you know, preacher? Because in eternity past, over 2,000 years ago, yeah, he was faithful. Man was sinful. Man was on his way to hell. Man was getting out of here. But over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He was faithful. He was faithful. He was faithful. I'm going to tell you, he was faithful. He took a tree and marched up Calvary's hill. He died on Calvary's hill. Mean men killed him. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died for you and he died for me. He was just being faithful. He was faithful. He could have called a legion of angels to come and take him down. But he was just being faithful to us. Jesus died on Calvary. They buried him in a barber tomb. But early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus, the son of God. They killed him for no reason. But he came to give his life for a wretched soul like me. He is my God. Oh, Lord. The Isaiah said, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for one more chance. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity. I was on my way to hell. You see, all have sinned, not y'all have sinned. We all have sinned. We all have fallen short of God's glory. But Jesus has been faithful to us. We serve the faithful and the true God. And we praise him for who he is. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just as you are. You can't get it right. You've been trying to get it right. And you trying to get it right got you stuck. You need Jesus to get it right for you. The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get it right with Him. The door is open. Give your life to Christ, the one who was faithful to you, the one that they killed just for you. God was faithful. If you haven't received him, if you have not received him, this is your moment. Don't let it pass you by. Bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. 
Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There may be others who are without a church home or who have not claimed your church home in many times, many moons, many years, many months. This is your moment. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and he's the main attraction. And there are others of you who struggle with sin just like I do. And I'm not talking about struggling with dancing. I'm not talking about struggling with drinking. I'm talking about struggling with the devil himself. Dealing with your attitude. Dealing with what you say. Dealing with what you go through. The door is open. Why don't you come? And let us pray with you and pray for you. This is your moment. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. Just now. Only trust him. We need to lift Sister Nicole Davis and her family up in prayer as her mother transitioned to be with the Lord. Sister Nicole Davis, we're lifting, lifting that family, that family in prayer. We're also lifting the Harper family in Mississippi in prayer as Brother Harper sit down in the chair and just slept on the way. We want to lift. Lift this family in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless you. We thank you, Father God, for those that you are able to be and welcome into a new dimension of life. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless their families. Bless that this transition be not in vain. Bless their families to look to you, the faithful God. Bless them to trust you, Father God. We ask you to console them, to comfort them, and bless them. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Yeah. Just now. offering time and it's time to to give to the Lord through tithes offering and sacrificial gifts if you need an envelope raise your hand and you will be served if you need an envelope raise your hand and you will be served for those who are giving electronically you can give by way of Zelle our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com is our zelle account if you want to give by u.s postage system you can do so by mailing your offering your tithes and your gifts to p.o box 503 missouri city texas p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 p.o box 503 Seven seven four five nine. Brother Dixon, I need to see you right quick, Brother Dixon. Brother Dixon.
his goodness and his kindness. I will.
My dear brother, by your obedience to the great head of the church, Jesus the Christ, and your confession of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, I do baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
He's going to make a, a valuable difference in the lives in which we live. We're glad to see young men uh, come God-fearing young men. Thank you so much. Lord, we thank them. We want to make sure that we will make sure he gets back dressed and then, then he'll take a picture with his family. Uh, we have our photographer here. I want everybody in the household to take a picture together. That's how we'll do it. Everybody in, in one household. Um, that uh, before before COVID, we would take a big group picture. But uh, just run up, pose for a minute, and, and Brother Jonathan Thomas will, will take your picture. If you're in a household, uh, you can take a picture together. We we still in the midst of COVID. Y'all know that, right? We in the middle of COVID. We just we just on the peak of seeing what the rodeo is going to do. We on the peak of seeing what what two what two Mardi Gras is going to do, and we certainly on the peak of seeing what. Uh, Spring break, spring break. Amen. Amen. two spring breaks, two Mardi Gras, one rodeo, and several days of rodeo. We want to make sure that we remain vigilant. So uh, you can, if you're in the same household or your family, you can take a picture together without your mask on. But as soon as your picture's over, guess what? Put it back on. Amen. Let us stand and be dismissed. Everybody got their gifts, right?
Bless our bereaved, and bless our sick and our shut in. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to be the church of the 21st century that will do first century things. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. And we all sing together. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you. God keep you. Please run by right quick and take some pictures, and we'll be gone. <laughs>